Senator Whitehouse. Thank you uh, very much. I know that both the chairman and the ranking member had to uh, go on to other things. It's a very busy time here, as you all know very well from all the many issues you have uh, in other committees here in the Senate as well as ours. Um, but I want to join my colleagues in expressing my appreciation for uh, both the bipartisan nature of the committee's work that uh, Senator Alexander and Senator Murray have led, and also, and particularly, um, Senator Alexander's stated commitment this morning that he wishes to move on to address other issues, cost-related issues in the system. And what I would like to spend my time with uh, our uh, distinguished governors uh, here this morning doing is to ask for um, you to take a look at a couple of questions and then get back to us, because I'm going to make a bet that we will, in fact, move on to those other topics once we get through the market stabilization. And I'm not sure we're going to get you back before we move on. So I want to take advantage of you while you are here. Um, these are questions that I will ask for the record so that you have a chance to have your staffs get back to us here. But I really think it would be helpful for us as we move on into that next area to get your views in some of the specifics in those areas. So uh, I've got a number of them. Um, the first has to do with patient safety and medical errors. It strikes me that hospitals who uh, give their patients hospital-acquired infections are a good bipartisan topic. I don't think they're Democratic or Republican hospital-acquired infections. Um, and there have been a lot of studies that show there is significant cost to uh, patient safety problems and medical errors, with hospital-acquired infections being one example uh, among many, perhaps the most watched example. So uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on whether you think that ought to be an area of focus for us. A second somewhat related topic is the wild variations in care and in outcomes that we see in different states and for different conditions. It seems to me that the areas where people are showing really good results ought to be leadership areas, and other states ought to be induced to move towards those results. Um, and we should try to encourage that kind of behavior in whatever way we can. So that's the second point, is what you can give us by way of advice in trying to move the bad performers where there are wide variations in care and outcomes more towards the higher performers. The third is in the area of administrative overhead and dispute. There are lots of areas uh, under that general category, but the one that most readily comes to mind to me is the continuing bureaucratic warfare between insurance companies and providers over getting paid. Insurance companies have built an enormous stable of staff who are dedicated to telling providers, no, we're not going to pay you for that. Providers, in return, have had to staff up with an armamentarium of their own to fight through that insurance industry blockade. And the entire exercise, back and forth, contributes exactly zero healthcare value, by my uh, judgment anyway. And I think there are, have to, there are ways that we can reduce those burdens. I know that years ago when I visited our Cranston uh, Community Health Center, uh, they told me that they had more bodies on the payroll devoted to trying to get paid than they had on the payroll. Boy, do I see a lot of heads nodding when I said that. Um, devoted to actually delivering healthcare services to their clients and customers. Fourth is trying to support, and Wisconsin has been particularly good in this, trying to support making sure that uh, what a patient wants as he or she nears the end of life is what that patient gets. There's a combination of bad preparation for that inevitability and bad Medicare and other billing rules around that predicament that very often lead families to get trapped into a machinery of hospital, the grind, 
that they can't get out of in time for their loved one to actually have their wishes honored uh, at home. And again, I think there's no Democratic or Republican way to have a family's wishes honored. Now, the last thing I'll mention is payment reform. I think we can do a lot more to encourage um, health care as opposed to just treatment when people get sick. And um, my time is up, but let me just brag on Coastal Medical, a primary care practice in Rhode Island, and Rhode Island Primary Care Physicians, another big primary care practice in Rhode Island, both of whom have demonstrated that they are driving down costs year over year on an average annual patient basis while seeing the service to their patients and the happiness and satisfaction of their patients soar because they're getting better treatment. And better treatment in this area actually has the happy benefit often of reducing cost. So if you could look at those specific things together with any particular local things that I haven't mentioned that you'd like to flag for us, I think that'd be a very useful thing for us to put to work in later hearings. And I thank the chairman for indulging me in the extra minute. And I thank all of you for your cooperation in this effort.